Hello everyone. I am Dr. Manpreet Khemka. I am a child and adolescent psychiatrist by profession. This is the second video in the series of what we can do as parents to support the emotional well-being of our children during COVID times. And what I am going to focus on in this talk is a very important aspect in the life of our children, which is the screens, internet. Now, internet has been a saving grace in life of our kids and also adults in the last few months. We know that it's only because of the internet and the connections thereof that they have been able to maintain their education as uninterrupted as possibly could be during these times. You know, online distant learning, tutoring has been made possible because of internet. It's only through this, the Zoom calls, Skype calls, FaceTimes that they have been able to maintain contact with their extended families and with their friends. And having that connection with their friends is such an important part in the development of a normal teenager. They have been able to express themselves. So be it through art, music, literature, whatever is the, the area of interest that they have. In the absence of real kind of physical presence in classes where they are able to self-express, internet has been a broad global platform that they are able to put forth their talent, get feedback, expand their horizons. It also has been a source of entertainment through TV, Netflix, Amazon Prime and whatnot, video games. In some cases, it has also given them a purpose and a sense of looking beyond themselves. And that is also a very core feature, core developmental task that teenagers go through having in their identity formation. For example, we know about this movement started by teenagers called March for Life, which has expanded thanks to social media connections. It all seems really good. It all seems very healthy in bringing a positive development in the life of teenagers. But we as parents also need to be aware of what are the dangers involved dependent on, depending on the time that our kids are spending on internet. And for us to be able to appreciate it better, we need to have some basic idea. What is the online life of our teenagers like? And as part of this conversation, I'm going to talk about two important areas, social media and video gaming, which is, which makes broadly much of the time that kids, teenagers are spending on internet. So what is social media? So social media is basically websites and apps which help us connect across the globe. And some of these forums are like virtual networks which brings together people that share common interests, be it in music or art, literature, and kind of creates that community, village, where people can connect with each other. They can exchange ideas, they can express themselves, they can comment on other people's work, get feedback in real time. So there is a lot of potential for growth on social media websites, if it is constructively and positively used. So some of the websites we are quite aware of, we as adults are active on these websites ourselves, for example, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. But there are a lot more apps that may be very important part of our kids' day-to-day -day lives that we may not be even aware of. And just how we would like for us to know who are our children's friends, it is important to know what are the websites or apps that consume much of their day. That that they have an online presence at. So some of these apps are Snapchat, Tumblr, Twitch, Kick, Discord. The list is endless. And new and new apps are being launched into the market every single day. So I talked about the advantages of staying connected on social media. It also comes with some risks that we are going to talk next. But just looking at some of the interesting facts, three-fourths of teenagers between the age of 13 and 17 own a smartphone by US demographics. At least three-fourths of these kids who own a smartphone are active 
pretty much active on at least one social media app and 70% of them are more active on more than one sometimes more than five five of these apps so uh, historically technically looking at the research we know that Instagram snapchat any of those apps which are more photo centric they have more dominance in girls teenager female their lives whereas tumblr and twitch some of those apps which allow for the live stream of video gaming they are more popular with teenage boys so again like i said it's very important to know that these online networking they are just like virtual friends that your kids are talking for much of their part of their day it's important for us to know what they are active at so what are some of the problems that we see are on a rise in uh, teenagers directly related to social media now this really depends on the content that they are being exposed to the networks that they are associating with and the time that they are spending on social media now there is a real phenomena called as fear of missing out fomo which basically explain that urge and need that the teenager has to be constantly present on social media in their virtual world and that means that they are spending excessive amounts of time in this virtual world and neglecting what they need to be doing in their real world so some of the common problems that we are seeing is obesity which is because of the sedentary lifestyle not doing exercise that is other important um, area that they need to focus on uh we are also seeing declining grades in school because of the lack of effort or the time that they are spending on the education aspect the homeworks assignments that they are supposed to do we are definitely seeing uh distancing in the social relationships be it with their friends family members because of that constant presence in the virtual world we are we are seeing an increase in the sleep problems directly related to it we are also seeing that um uh, as part of growth you know kids they figure out what their hobbies are what their interests are what are some of the coping skills that they can utilize when they are in stressful situations so being constantly on social media is not giving them that avenue to explore some of the interests and hobbies that they may be passionate about so these are the dangers these are the negative consequences which are very overtly right in front of our eyes there may also be some psychological issues that kids are going through because of social media let's talk about that let's talk about some of the psychological impact of social media on teenagers and of one of the big elephant in the room what i'm going to talk about is cyberbullying that we as parents need to be aware of now cyberbullying is bullying that can happen over the apps over these websites that kids are engaging in it can happen in different shapes and forms it can happen as derogatory mean hurtful text exchanges that may happen one on one through personal messages it can happen on a big wall where many people can watch the insult being caused sometimes it includes sharing of embarrassing pictures embarrassing personal information about a person on a public platform sometimes it can also include a group of individuals who are maybe making up or spreading a rumor about an individual it basically contains the information that can be personally hurtful it can be embarrassing um humiliating and can instill sense of fear in the person who is being targeted now how common is it the the demographics are quite variable part of it is that it may be under reported teenagers children even though they may be going through it they may start that sense of self doubting they may start sulking in it by themselves and may have fear of sharing it with their guardian their parents teachers because of the fear of the fact because of the fear that they may actually lose their privileges they may lose their smartphone or their um, ability to connect with other people once the grown ups in the family come to know about it now how is it different than bullying in person we know of bullying it has been there for generations but how is cyber bullying more damaging to the psychological makeup of a child or a teenager 
Now one of my um, patient that I saw recently put it very, um, you know, she sadly she put it this way. She said it feels like being in a dark room and not knowing where the next punch is coming. So again, being stuck in that situation, kids feel that there is no escape out. If they are keeping it confidential to themselves, not sharing it with anyone, they are checking the phone multiple times as to the, uh, you know, in context with the insult that was caused, what is the feedback of other people out there? It's kind of they are stuck in that negativity 24-7. So in that way, they have more prolonged exposure, more prolonged damage that could be related to it. Now, anonymous aggressors, they, they are, sometimes they hide behind an identity that we don't know and that gives it more brutality they are more disinhibited more um, no breaks to it how far that humiliation can go size of audience is big so you can only imagine as a teenager being insulted in front of the broad group it is quite damaging to the psyche um, there is also that sense of permanence and what that means is that the content that is shared could be reshared multiple times with multiple platforms multiple people and it's going to be there always and that gives the sense of inability to escape to the person who is being victimized and in that way it can be more challenging we know that cyberbullying can definitely increase the risk of depression anxiety school refusal um, it can in some cases it can also increase the risk of suicidal thoughts especially those who are uh, vulnerable to its impact so apart from the risk of cyberbullying, there are also some other inherent dangers in directly coming from social media. For example, exposure to inappropriate material. So be it related to sexuality, drug use, alcohol use, substance use, glamorizing a more um, kind of a criminal behavior in a way. And it normalizes as if it's part of the real, real world, though it is not. You know, so while it glamorizes these aspects and makes it uh, makes it appear that it's a natural trend in teenagers' life, it does not highlight the consequences that happen as part of natural consequence to those risky and um, impulsive, high-risk activities. So that's one danger. Another important problem that we are seeing is that. Um, there is an exposure to a distorted sense of reality and that's causing not just low self-esteem issues in children but it's also from it gives us gives an idea about a body image to be a certain perfectionist way in girls teenagers especially there has been an increasing trend towards eating disorders or uh, not being comfortable in their own body and sometimes going to extreme measures to get that perfect photoshopped picture that is idealized version of um, that is idealized version of what they're seeing on the internet the other risk that the kids can be exposed to is because of their immaturity and not being uh, not being completely aware of the privacy risks involved you know when you are networking or when you're exposed to strangers all across the globe some of them may be perpetrators some of them them may have um, predatory tendencies towards them and teenagers or children being naive can fall victim to these people out there may end up giving their personal information that cannot just increase their vulnerability that cannot just put them in danger but also put their family at risk so these are some of the things to be aware of and the next important step is as parents what we can do to make sure that our kids are not feeling uh, falling in trap of these dangers what are some of the things that we can do as parents to protect our children from the dangers in the social media world so like i said first most important thing is know the network know your online know the know your child's online presence and what and who they are associating with educate yourself and your family about the risks involved and make sure that there is a room for 
free communication so that if kids are being targeted there they can feel feel free to approach you seek your advice seek your guidance and th they don't take it that they would be reprimanded for it or there will be consequences being in put in place if they are being victimized next have clear cut expectations about the time that they are going to spend on internet on social media the expectations you have in real life it could be as simple as making sure that their homework is being done their grades are being maintained some physical exercise their the sleep is not being disturbed so having these important expectations laid out plain and straight without sugar coating that's very important role that you play as a, as a parent to make sure that um, uh, you know they are not exposed to the dangers third most important parents need to be a role model themselves you know so even the the media diet the, what the parents are uh, the, uh, being exposed to the websites that they are active on themselves and how much time they are spending on it they are they need to be a good ro role model for their children it's important that you encourage the development of other hobbies interests um, in say varied fields like art music literature reading so that your child your teenager has an avenue to keep themselves busy without becoming too dependent on a virtual world fifth teach your children about online privacy and safety and broadly it means having that open communication with them about the digital footprints you know make them aware what they share the content they share what they post is going to stay there forever you know so um make sure that they their privacy settings they are aware of their privacy settings so on some public media forums maybe it's a good idea to check that their privacy settings are enabled make sure you talk to them that in no circumstances they are they are supposed to give their full name address social security number details about their family bank account number to any stranger out there no matter how convincing or persistent or um the other person uh, comes across as the, this personal information need not be shared so um make sure that the location uh enable the location being enabled that's turned off so that um a potential perpetrator is not able to uh, they are aware that this is a potential danger out there and they can protect themselves and your family so some simple rules like off time from screen that has to be a family rule for everybody involved in the family for example dinner table meal times should be gadget free you cannot be on social media while you are uh, supposed to engage in family meal times together it should not be promoted in their bedrooms after a certain time frame in the evenings because that is definitely known to cause significant sleep disruption and like i said some ground rules can be laid that what are the basic expectations before they are allowed to spend time on social media the other important area that defines the online presence of teenagers is the video gaming culture so now over the last decade or so there has been much change in the gaming culture that the teenagers are part of earlier days it used to be those arcades then came the um you know the consoles that you could attach to your tv and play games then came those handheld devices and now the games are on smartphones which can be with you all the time 24/7 and um the kids are spending extensive amount of time on those video games so now again as long as it is done in moderation there is an entertainment value you know based on the game that you're engaging in there may be some educational purpose in it learning may happen from it of course there is a, a scope for problem solving the hand eye coordination so these are those are all the good things that can come from video games when we are using it in moderation but again depending on the content of the video games it may start causing problematic behaviors and there can be different 
kinds of video games that the teenagers are playing these days it could be like real time strategy gaming it could be role playing it could be shooting games where there is uh, uh, you know sophisticated characters that you are becoming a part of i have heard some of the parents tell me that the child or the teenager becomes so engrossed in the character that th- their the demarcation between who they really are and the character is gone you know so they are absolutely obsessed in that fantasy world because of spending extensive amount of time with them and again sadly if you look at the culture of video game it's a multi million billion industry that's growing up the they are coming up with more engaging sophisticated storylines that is engrossing and um very engaging to the teenagers but sadly many of these video games have a negative content and tone to it for example um focus on the criminal mentality we might have heard of that grand auto theft and stuff which uh, kind of glamorizes that criminal behavior in a way or the killing or disrespecting the authority sometimes sexual provocative and obscene gestures mostly targeting females um there is use of foul language obscenity in the gaming itself so as parents we need to be aware of what are the games that our kids are spending so much time in some of the red flags that parents can watch out for when the gaming is becoming more of a disorder more of a problematic behavior for their child is when the use is excessive and they are spending extensive amount of time on it when um they can't control the amount of time that they are spending on it when there is this strong resistance to family members telling them that they are spending too much time on it when you are seeing that they you know they are not spending time with the family their grades are suffering their sleep is suffering their other activities other interests are not developing at all because of the obsession with uh, the gaming and again the new research that is coming that is actually supporting that some of the changes that we are seeing in brain are almost similar to what would we what uh, we would see in a person who is addicted to drugs and alcohol so that's troublesome that's concerning now are there any predictors that could warn me that my child has more risk um of getting into internet gaming disorder now some of the uh, risk factors are identified for example being a male and being impulsive so there are other psychiatric conditions that may have uh, we don't know whether it's the cause or the effect but uh, it may increase the risk of gaming becoming a gaming disorder for example previous history of ADHD or autism spectrum anxiety disorders social anxiety social phobias obsessive compulsive disorders so again we don't know whether it's the cause or effect it's it, is it because the kids are kind of uh, inept in some ways in their social skills and that's why they are engaging more in that gaming culture or it's the other way around but regardless of what it is it's important for parents to understand that teenage is a crucial stage in the life span in the life development many processes are happening during teenage years for example the brain maturation the ability of a child ability of a teenager to learn how to regulate their emotions you know their their identity formation their sense making sense of the world around them and how they belong in that world their um relationship with their peers and family so these are very important milestones which are hallmark for teenage development and when our mind or when their mind is absolutely crowded and obsessively engaged in gaming all through the day these are the areas which can significantly be impaired and not develop and then it becomes our role as parents how we can intervene so that that trajectory can be diverted so what can we do as parents to make sure that the gaming experience that our children our teenagers have is more of a productive entertaining and not getting into the realm of a problematic behavior so a couple of suggestions i have first of all in preschoolers avoid giving them gaming as means of entertainment you know secondly when you are thinking of buying a video game for your child or your teenager always check what they called as the esrs rating 
for that game and what that means is the electronic software rating and what that will advise you it's just like you when you're seeing a movie you you see that whether it's age appropriate or not that scale that rating scale will help you figure out whether the content is age appropriate for your child or not sometimes it's helpful to play video games with your child with your teenager to uh, get a sense of what their experience is like what is the online what are the online interactions that are happening over the gaming in the in the networking that they have it's important to have a set of clear cut rules and expectation expectations so about the content and um the time that they're spending on it it's important to monitor their their behaviors and how they are interacting with the family members how their school functioning is how health conscious they are so that if you are seeing that red flags that it's going in that red zone where there is excessive use you can put some limits to it i always encourage parents to have video games in an in a common area in the house not in their bedrooms that they can engage in things that you are absolutely clueless what's going on behind the closed doors so i hope some of these um, some of this discussion and the tips and tricks that i discuss that will be educating enough educational enough for you so that you can know the online um, the benefits advantages and disadvantages of it and keep your family safe and make it more of a healthy learning productive experience for yourself and your family take care if there are any questions concerns feel free to reach me i'll be very happy to answer to the best of my capacity be safe